morning. Welcome to Ebenezer's Online Services. We are so glad that you joined us today. We know that Pastor Woods has a timely word for us. Enjoy, be blessed, and please stay safe. Good morning, Ebenezer friends and family. And just thank you so much for just connecting with us today. I must say, as I go through this section, my heart is uh, heavy. I'm still sad on uh, the things that have happened in our nation in the last few days. And I I'm just praying for God's will to be done. Uh, today, we're going to get uh, into a portion of scriptures that is very real. Uh, as I uh, sat in my chair and I looked at these events, and I'm going to talk about that a little later within the scriptures. The scriptures just literally jumped up out of the page. I was like, my God. My Lord, my God, as Thomas said, the reality of where we are. I, I have a picture behind me, and I'll, I'll give you some insight. We're, we're going to talk about free fall uh, today, and I want you to uh, get this picture of this earth following, being, being, being pulled down. I want you to get that in your mind, and I want you to think about where our society is coming. Um, before I pray, uh, and just uh, get into this service. I, I want you to continue to connect with ebcnc.com. We've got some exciting things to come that we can interact. We can really be in prayer and stay connected. So ebcnc.com is important. We're going to strive to keep up those teachings online. Some have asked us even when we get back in the church, whenever God sees fit to allow us to get back there, will we be online? Yes, we're going to still be online and Get the word out because God has actually increased us with so many uh, listeners and viewers that really want to grow. I, I believe that God is using this uh, in his end times, that word parousia that we're going to talk about. Um, please understand God is doing something big in this season. Uh, don't forget about on ebcnc.com and soon on our app, uh, we have a page there that you can share your testimony. Um, we've got a number, we created a number, 336-734-9174, that it, you can actually call in. Uh, you can testify, you can um, sing a song, you can pray. And, and we are, we're uh, archiving those things to be on our website and sometimes even use in our Bible studies or services. So as you lead, please use that. But we still encourage you to do videos if you would like, but we wanted to give everybody an option that they could have easy accessibility uh, to share, to share what God is doing or to pray, pray for our online listeners, pray for our families and pray for our nation. If you didn't get to see our uh, Wednesday night, uh, we went into prayer. Uh, my heart was so heavy that day uh, that my family, uh, we grabbed the, each other's hands around the table and we began to pray and just lift up the situation of our nation and our world. So please use that as an, an outlet to share and connect with one another. We want you to continue to interact with us, interactions online, our chat sessions, but most importantly, interactions with other saints. Don't allow COVID-19 and mass to separate you. When I say that, God has given us technological advances that we can text one another. We can call one another. We can talk. We can FaceTime if you have an iPhone and Android uh, users. They have WhatsApp app and other things that they can actually connect with one another video-wise. We've got Zoom. We've got free conference calls. So there's still so many things that we can connect with one another in a safe way so that interaction is so important today i want you to uh, focus in on this scripture our giving thank you for all that you're doing for the church and abroad reaching out uh, this has become a wonderful scripture for, for myself and the family and the church second corinthians 9 7 so let each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity for god loves a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Isn't that good? But there's some other scriptures that I don't often quote, but I want you to get these. Second Corinthians 9, as it is written, he is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Are you thankful? 
of how God has been a wonderful provider. And he's taking care of us even as we go through. I want to say that again. He's taking care of us even as we go through. Let, let's pray. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your saints. Lord, I thank you for all those who are listening, those who are viewing, those who will listen, those who will view. Lord, help us to hear your word today. Help us to celebrate your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your provisions in, in everything, Lord. Thank you for another day that you have made. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, after this next election, I'll be back and we're getting ready to jump into this word. Please prepare your heart. God is speaking in a powerful way. See you soon.
today we get back into the series Second Thessalonians, uh, dealing with that whole process of what we call the parousia, uh, the coming of Christ. Uh, I really want you to focus on these scriptures today. Um, this week has been uh, kind of tough for me as I have uh, viewed what's going on in our nation and in our world, also with the rising numbers with uh, COVID-19 and also COVID-19 deaths. Uh, this is a, a trying time uh, for the church and uh, for just everyone that's involved in this season and time to make sure that we're hearing uh, from the Lord and doing His will. Uh, but before we go any further, I just want you to uh, pray with me as we uh, go before our Master. Father, I just thank you so much for who you are, Lord. Um, thank you for being our God, our Lord, our King, our everything. Lord, right now, I just pray that you speak. Just speak strong. If there's someone that's uh, listening that doesn't know you, would you help them to know you today? Would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know us by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Now, Lord, I ask you to move me out of the way, forgive me of my sins, and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Holy Spirit, would you speak today? Would you guide my mind, my mouth? Lord, would you be exalted today as we go through these scriptures? Lord, I thank you that uh, you're the one that transforms us from the inside out. Would you make this word so plain, so easy to be understood, that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? I just give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. On today's scripture, as we've been continuing from last Sunday, we're going to start out at 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 2. And I want you to focus in on the third verse, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and that third verse. It reads, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. really want you to listen to this. I, I really um, believe this is applicable to where we are uh, in this season of time. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.3 Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. I want to speak from the title today, Free Fall. Free Fall. Uh, as we go into this message today, I, I, I want you to really focus in on the scriptures. But most importantly, um, as you're focusing on the scriptures, hear the voice of God as he is speaking uh, to all of us in this season and in this time. Uh, this this title free fall is actually uh, comes from a, a Newtonian um, thought pattern in physics. It means when something falls and there's no resistance, and the only thing that's pulling that thing down or that object is gravity. It's called free fall. A and today I am seeing our nation. I'm seeing the world um, in this free fall. Uh, in the beginning, I showed you a picture of the earth coming down and being pulled down and I really feel that's where we are as we are getting to apocalyptic times uh, times of tribulation and the book of revelations and that's why I believe the Lord put this so strongly on my heart this book because it gives us understanding of where we are in this season and in this time let's get a little review time frame Paul the Apostle writes this around 52 AD um, very early uh, or uh, a long distance from where we are now in 2021 but please understand very pertinent uh, to our season as said before this parousia again is the coming uh, the second coming of Christ that's the way we're using it but also this parousia this Greek word can be used as the coming of the Antichrist which we're going to talk about the Antichrist is literally what it says that which is anti to Christ but we also find out that the enemy the Antichrist uh, he is a uh, one that tries to imitate Christ on the other side so he will use lying wonders he will do all kinds of things you may remember uh, Moses when uh, God sent him to Egypt and he gave him this rod 
And God uh, said, just throw down that rod when you talk to Pharaoh. And he threw down his rod and it turned into snakes. Wow, that, that was amazing. But the Egyptians also had magicians that were there. And they were able to turn their rods into snakes too. But what separated this imitation of the enemy coming in, it said that Moses' snakes ate up. Uh, those of Pharaoh and his magicians. So in that, the enemy is always trying to come up and setting up his thought pattern above God. But of course, God is always in charge. Um, Paul the Apostle in this book, uh, he has to clarify some things about the second coming of the Perusia. Um, the saints had gotten caught up and they had read his letters and they felt that this was going to happen like the next day. And so some of them had literally left their jobs and gone to the mountains and they were waiting for Christ. Uh, tribulation is going on in their lives and we're going to talk about that pressures of all types. So they're they're feeling at this point Jesus is going like going to come back the next day. And so Paul the apostle he writes this second Thessalonian letter uh, to give them understanding of the exact times and, and literally as we look at this the exact times and seasons of Christ's return. Uh, last Sunday we dealt with God's final judgment uh, and his glory. We were in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 5, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. And we talked about, I want to be in that number. Anybody want to be in that number? I do. Points in review, just to get us to uh, the second chapter. Uh, grace and peace, more like him. Are you worthy? Hell is real. The power of prayer. Uh, in today's lessons, we get into when he gets, Paul gets more detail in correcting uh, these saints as he's led of the Holy Spirit. He also deals with the falling away. We're going to use that a little later or uh, what's called the apostasy. Let's, let's jump into this chapter, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. First point, I want you to process this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, the saints were, were going through so much, as said before, stress was on their lives, so much so, that some of them felt that they had entered into um, the revelation period or the tribulation period. Uh, they felt that literally uh, the Antichrist had risen up and they were in the midst of that vast struggle that we read about in the book of Revelation. So Paul has to go back and he has to clarify the exact timing uh, that Christ is going to come. Saints, even though we're going through now, listen to me. Even though we're going through and there's stresses, there's stuff that I have never seen before in my life, it is going to get worse. There's other things to come. Now, I, I am not a doomist, please. I, I'm not one to, to speak of that, to make you sad, but I want you to understand there's so many things to come still before Christ returns. Now, I believe that those things can come within 24 hours. They can come within a week. They can culminate, but there are more issues that will arise. And I, I've been reading and I've been meditating and I've been thinking about these things. And I'm like, God, I'm seeing these things move in so quickly. Uh, it, it, it's as if, you know, when the storm clouds come and, and when a storm comes, you, you can go from a sunny day and clouds can move in and all of a sudden you can get rain. When I was in Jamaica, I experienced this in Haiti, that it would be sun shining outside and all of a sudden that storm would move in and rain would start coming. This is where I believe as we count down to Christ's return. Now, I want you to understand as we look at these scriptures that his return is imminent. But again, things have to be in place. Notice Paul puts this down, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Free fall. A point I want you to focus in on now, the falling away, the falling away or the apostasy. 
I personally believe studying the scriptures that we're in that process now of the falling away. And I, I want to explain that. Uh, first of all, in the scripture says that day, uh, that equals Christ's return. So again, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. I, I, I felt this, I've been preaching this for a long time, that the falling away has been in process. But, but I believe it's more than just not going to a physical church for we're in that season and time that many churches have literally shut down physically because of COVID-19. So it's bigger than that. And I've taught and I've understood. So now we're talking about falling away from who Christ is, the faith, abandoning what but to be a Christian is all about. That means that some can carry the title of a Christian, but are not living like a Christian. There ought to be some amens today. Uh, and, and, and that is, in my uh, thought pattern, the, the worst kind of falling away when you look like something that you're really not. Uh, look at our society. Just in Greensboro uh, in 2020, we uh, reached a historic event of, of murders in, in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, Notice the deception that's going on, uh, the greed that's going on, all kinds of gross immorality, uh, not just here in the United States, but all over the world. Things that uh, were hideous that we would have shied away from have become normality at this point are some things that we look at on our streaming services and we partake in on a daily basis that used to uh, really sicken us to our stomachs. But now we've been conditioned to take these things in. And, 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 and so many times uh, many people say these are OK when God has explicitly said that they are wrong. I'm talking about free fall. Now, now let's examine in this scripture uh, this portion that calls the man of sin, or he's the Antichrist. Let's not forget something in 1 John 4, 3. In every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Now, please, I, I dealt with this on last Sunday. The spirit of Antichrist is here. Are you hearing me? The spirit of Antichrist is here. And I'm going to talk more about this. It is here. It is pressing. Yes, there's going to be some good days, man. We're always going to have some good days. We find out in Revelations there will be some good days. But predominantly, there are going to be some bad, stressful days, especially as Christians striving to live uh, in, in the standard of holiness. Are you hearing me? Keeping that standard of what Christ has set forth, it's going to be some tough, t tough days. But some may say, could you please tell me who is this man of sin? I, I know we, we need to define that. Note at theologian Matthew Henry, he writes this. He said, the names of this person or rather the state and power here spoken of, he is called the man of sin to denote uh, his, his egregious wickedness. And not only he is he addicted to and practices wickedness, wickedness himself, but he also promotes countenances uh, and commands sin and wickedness in others. And he is the son of perdition because he himself is devoted to certain destruction and is the instrument of destroying many others both in soul and body. I'm talking about free fall. Uh, uh, co some commentators have uh, tried to break this down. Okay, give me a name, some may ask. Some believe that this man of, uh, of sin will be a, a Jewish antichrist of a type when I look at that scriptures. Others teach that he'll be a Gentile head that's reincarnated from uh, the Roman uh, Empire. Uh, Farstead writes this. He says he has been equated with the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope, the Roman Empire, the final form of apostate Christendom. Judas reincarnated, a Nero reincarnated, the Jewish state, Mohammed, Luther, Napoleon, uh, Mussolini, and the embodiment of Satan himself. Farstead writes that. And just recently, uh, with, within our generation and reading books, uh, some have called Hitler uh, the Antichrist. And, and, and books were written on, literally, on the, the, the thought pattern that Barack Obama actually had characteristics of the Antichrist. It is. You can look on Amazon. It was written with that uh, to fit those characteristics. And, and, and people have said that Kim Jong-un is the Antichrist. And yes, Donald John Trump. 
the Antichrist. And so uh, now as we think about these things, we go, God, has the Antichrist come? Has he written? Now, I believe our purpose, please hear me, is not to get ahead of God's timing. Uh, we find out when people began to name names, specific names, it, it, as we look at history, um, they've been wrong. And so we can't get ahead of God's timing. But, but we need to understand this is the season and time that we need to get closer to the Lord. Are there any amens in the house? Uh, we need to make sure that we're focusing in on God's will, that whenever all of this comes to a culmination, we're right where God wants us to be. I'm talking about free fall. I want to believe that the church will be pulled out before the Antichrist actually rises to his fullness. That, that's what I want to believe. And some of you that have uh, studied the scriptures and looked at commentators, this is called the rapture. It, it means before that tribulation, that final tribulation period occurs, the church is going to be pulled out. I, I do want to believe that, but I want you to understand whether you hold uh, this doctrine of pre-tribulation, that means uh, believing that we're going to be raptured out before the tribulation, but there are also some people that have studied the scriptures and they're saying, nah, uh, we might have to go through the tribulation. That means that you're a post-tribulationist. Please understand, I want you to know that Christ is more than enough. Are there any hallelujahs out there? No matter what we go through, and I know some of you are dealing with things. You're dealing with family members that have COVID-19 and other struggles and other issues. Maybe you got high blood pressure. Maybe you're dealing with diabetes. Maybe you're dealing with a family that's just losing at this point. Kids that are going their own way. Christ is more than enough. But please understand there's going to be an outside source that's already here. The Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist that's coming in trying to change norms in a sense even for the Christians. I want you to know that Christ can take you through all of this. Are you ready? I'm talking about free fall. Look at this next scripture, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, and 5. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Here's another point. Get this one. The world out of control. The world out of control. The man of sin, notice in here, he's going to be allowed to actually gain power. And, and, and he's going to be the whole key to ushering in that tribulation period uh, the, the world has yet to witness. I, I'm talking about stresses that we, we cannot even imagine. We have seen some things this week that we couldn't imagine happen. I'm telling you, the spirit of Antichrist is growing. Pastor uh, John MacArthur, he's a noted theologian and an author of books about the book of Revelation and the tribulation period, he writes this. He says, Paul is referring to the very act of ultimate apostasy, which reveals the final Antichrist and sets the course for the events that usher in the day of the Lord. Uh, apparently, the man of sin will be seen as a supporter of a religion so that God and Christ will not appear as his enemies until the apostasy. Th th this is key. So that means that someone's going to rise up and he's going to have a vibe that he's actually religious. He's going to support some parts of the Christian church. Please, please walk with me on that. That means that he's going to be able to pull in both sides of the aisle. He's going to be able to talk to everyone. Notice as, 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 as he continues on here, he exalts himself and opposes God by moving into the temple, the place for worship of God, declaring himself to be God and demanding the worship of the world. Um, MacArthur goes on. He says, in this act of satanic, Satanic self, li listen to this, deification, he commits the great apostasy and defiance of God. For the first three and a half years of the tribulation, he maintains relations with Israel. But halts those, uh, Daniel 9, 27, we see that. And for the last three and a half years, there is a great tribulation under his reign. We find that in Daniel 7, 25, 11, 36 through 39, Matthew 24, 15 through 21, Revelations 13, 1 through 8, culminating with the day of the Lord. Free fall. I know that's a lot, but I want you to process this. If you got to go back and look at that, you can pause and, and, and really focus in that. But the, the fact remains is that this Antichrist, I'm talking about a big eight 
Now, the Antichrist that rises up is going to be able to bridge the gap of religion and immorality until he has got everybody in a friendly relationship and then he flips the script. I'm talking about a free fall. Second Thessalonians 2 6. Notice this. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. Remember, we can't get ahead of God's timing. Seven, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Here's another point. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. No, now, before I, I, I go into this, it's interesting in, in just this week, this, these, these last few days, we've been hearing so much about lawlessness or law and order. These are key words that, are, that have been coming up over and over more, keeping the law and lawlessness and law and order. Please understand, this, this is not by accident. This, this is all lining up where we're going at this point. I, I don't know when Christ is coming back, but I know the seasons, the clouds are starting to move in the question has to come as we look at this scripture is who is the restrainer who is restraining E.W. Rogers gives us a basic basic definition of the Greek it is something and someone who wittingly and purposely and designedly holds it in check with the view to ensuring that the man of lawlessness is revealed in his own proper time roger says that and so so now we're, we're trying to figure out who is that restraining one that one who is holding back some astute men and and women name uh, the retainer as the roman em empire the the jewish state governmental controls that are set in and and yes some have brought in that it's the holy church it's the the christian church the the real believers that in, are indwelt by the holy spirit after thinking about this over and over i'm like okay wh where do i stand wh where do i I believe I believe that the retainer is the, the, the holy church the, the real church I'm not talking about a, a physical building of, of people that come in and, and are on a corner or, or on the street I'm not talking about that though they can be true I'm talking about true believers who love Jesus who have been changed in their heart who love him with their whole heart mind soul and strength and are progressively being transformed to be like him I'm talking about free fall I'm, I'm talking about folks who pray I'm talking about people who are in the scriptures I'm talking about those who have children that are trying to train up their children in the way of the Lord. I'm, I'm talking about folks that know how to call on the name of Jesus and strive to welcome God in everything. I'm not talking about perfect people, but I'm talking about people that know they have been changed. I'm talking about free fall today. Are there any witness out there that know that God is moving in a special way in a special season and he wants his saints to be able to step up and notice uh, there, there's some some substantial substantial scriptures that actually uh, uh, suggest that, that we are that retaining factor. Matthew 5, 13, it says, you are the salt. Jesus said this of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? I, I just want to insert this. How are you tasting right now? How are you tasting? How is your life tasting when you look at that script? How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Free fall. Are we the light? Are we the salt that God has called us to be in this season, in this time, in this upside down world, in this world? world that's at a free fall uh, Jesus goes on to say in John 3 19 listen to this and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God I'm talking about free fall this, this is 
is our time to shine, saints. Yes, yes, this, this is our time, not, not to just to be in a building, but to walk what Jesus has called us. We are the living epistles of Christ. We are uh, the only thing that some people around us are going to see that portrays Christ, and God wants us to shine. We sing that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, but I want you to understand God wants to shine in you in a bright light so that people can know that he is real. Please understand the attack on Capitol Hill the other day was horrific. Yes, it was it was horrific. I, I sat in my chair and I, I looked at it. I had so much other stuff, but but I was I was engrossed and I looked at it and, and tears were welling up in my eyes. My 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 heart ached. I, I'm like I serve this country uh, to to fight for it that that we could have peace in our country. And when I when I saw these things happening in our in our nation's capital, it, it, it struck me to the core and I sat there from hours and hours and I, I looked upon it and I, I'm going, God, this 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 scripture that I've been dealing with is becoming even more real to me. I, I'm seeing there's some things I thought could never happen, but to see what happened that day, I realized, I realized something. God's word is even more true than I've ever realized that it's coming to pass. I'm telling you, our nation and our world is going into a free fall, but even worse were people who were carrying Jesus signs in those riots, in those things that were happening and were willing to lay down the Jesus signs and rush in and break down things and even almost and sometimes bringing harm to other people. Saints of God, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. That's not the light. Please understand, it wasn't just that, but there's some things that the church needs to understand. People shouting on Sunday, but yet gossiping and talking about one another. That's not the light. You're just in a free fall. People obtaining offices in churches that look like angels on Sunday, but act like devils throughout the week. That's not the light. That's a free fall. Jesus preached against this type of false light. Matthew 23, 25. Listen to this. Jesus said this. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. 26. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you're like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Free fall. Let's pull this together because I, I, I really want you to get this and process this. This is where we are in our season and our time. I need you to open up your eyes to see how the enemy has come in, has moved on men's hearts. And just as Judas Iscariot uh, was taken over by the enemy, I believe the enemy is coming in and taking over people. Their mindsets and thoughts is really changing some things, as we said before, that you thought you would never see. They are happening right in front of us, being broadcast into our houses. Please understand that that spirit is here that's against God. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Here's our final point. We're going to pull this all together. Choose truth. Choose truth. Now, within that portion of scripture I pulled out, uh, there's one word that keeps coming up. Lie, lies, lies. Please, please, that, that, that's going to be a hallmark of the spirit of Antichrist. People will lie, will lie, not, not just one person. It will be a part of the whole deception, lying. And God says, because you don't choose the truth, I will allow delusions to come in and you're just going to believe it. Do you see that in our society that people have embraced lies rather than the truth? Obvious truth, common sense truth, truths that have been put before them. People have turned away from truth and decided to embrace lies. Jesus spoke of the enemy of our faith in John 8:44. He says, you are of your father, the devil. 
and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer, listen to this, from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. I free fall. Please understand uh, that the, the lying spirit is going to become so pervasive that the liar will start to believe his lies. Are you listening to me? It becomes so persuasive. If you tell a lie long enough, please understand, if you say it long enough, you actually start to believe that lie and you'll call the lie truth. You really believe that it's truth, even though it was based all the time on a lie. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. It's coming in. I'm telling you, it's not just in our governmental offices. It's not just in the United States. It's in our homes that people are believing lies. They have chosen not to believe truth and and let lies just pull right on into their driveways, lies to be in their homes, lies to lay in their beds, lies to be on their TV, embracing that so much so that they believe the lies are true. Saints, we must hold the truth. Paul the Apostle warns the church at Ephesus, Ephesians 4 and 14, he says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow in all things into him who is the head, Christ 16, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does it share causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love i'm talking about free fall god is saying that we have to walk in truth and whatever uh, that that truth it encompasses it, it always has to be based on what christ has already said in his word are you hearing me that's why we read the scriptures. That's why we meditate and that's why we pray because please understand if we don't have the word of God, we will fall into delusions. We'll fall into lies. Saints of God, get into your Bibles. If you can't read that well, listen to the scriptures because it's the scriptures that God uses us to keep on the right track. As we conclude today, please understand and I say it again and I say it loud, the spirit of the Antichrist is amongst us. I I'm not sure exactly date when Jesus is coming back and I dare not say that because the scriptures say don't even say that but please understand it said that the saints will know the seasons it will know we will know that it's getting close the old saints said it's getting late in the evening and the sun is going down please that spirit of antichrist is here the same devil that brought monumental temptations to Jesus in the wilderness he is here Luke 4 2 being tempted for 40 days by the devil and in those days he ate nothing and afterward when they had ended he was hungry. That same spirit is here. The same devil that met Christ when he cried out in the garden of Gethsemane. You know Jesus. He said, Father, is there any other way? That same spirit is here. The same devil that took over Judas is scared. The same devil that caused the mobs to beat my Jesus and the soldiers to come around and spit on him. And as Christ is hanging on the cross, nails in his hands and nails in his feet, people uh, they, they looked at him and they said that he was nothing. Uh, they even said that he wasn't even God and, and that he was a mocker. Those same people that came upon, please understand they were encompassed. I, I often wondered how could Jesus be in the, that, that crowd and, and before they even put him on the cross, remember those same folks, they had seen the miracle signs and wonders. Those same folks had eaten the miraculous bread and the fish. Those same folks had family members that eyes was open and, and the lame walk. Those same members was right there. But yet Yet the spirit of the Antichrist came into the mob and all of a sudden you heard them say crucify him, crucify him. But I need you to understand something today. That same God that hung on the cross of Calvary gives us hope today. Even though there's some struggles to come, even though there's some valleys to go through, even though there's some tears to be shed, that same Jesus on that cross carried our sins and bore our griefs. He died on the cross of Calvary, but three days later he got up with all power power and all glory because he knew we would be in a season of free fall but I want to give you some hope today please understand even though our world is falling right now please understand that Jesus is standing today with his arms wide open he said won't you fall into my arms are there any saints that can say hallelujah today when you know the Jesus that I know that he's always there to catch you and love you he's always there to take you through God said if I be for you I'm more than the whole world is a 
against you. Please understand, saints, we need to stand in this season. We need to be the light for the world is in a free fall. It's being pulled down, broken apart. Minds are confused. But God has given us 66 books. Oh, he's given us understanding of these words by his Holy Spirit. And those who are saved, their steps will be ordered. We'll be at the right place at the right time to minister to those that hearts are ready to accept Jesus Christ before it's too late. Maybe you're listening, looking in right now. And you're saying, this is serious. It is. Maybe the Spirit is convicting your heart right now. Please don't run. Please choose the truth. Say, what, what can I do? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead right now. And the scriptures say that you will be saved. It's by grace through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Would you please, I beg you, I implore you to accept that gift. He's standing there. He's saying, fall into my arms. As the world is falling, he said, just, just fall into my arms. I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. And I'll take you through everything. I'll make sure that you're okay. And when it's all said and done, you have final victory. And you've got everlasting life with him. Oh, what, what a God. What a mighty God that we serve. For the saints that are witnessing all of these and tears are coming down our eyes. We're, we're, we're sad and we're hurt. I, I, I must say, I, I don't think I'll ever be the same after looking at what happened in our nation, at the nation's capital. I don't think I'll ever be the same. Some realities were painted so vividly as I sat there. And I realized, God, it's time. It's time to step it up. It's time to get to know you more. It's time to cry aloud. It's time to lift up truth, even to a world that doesn't want to hear truth. We've got to let them know Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. I'm not talking about carrying banners, but I'm talking about living and being the banner. I'm talking about truly hearing God's voice and doing what he has desired us to do. Will you be a part of that movement? God's end time army of believers that say, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in, God. Do what you need to do. I pray that today you'll fall on your knees or stand or lift your hands or however and go before him and say, God, I want your will to be done, not my will to be done. I want to exalt you. I want you to take the lead in everything as we're in this season. Oh, that's the desire for the church. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. So much in this, so much, Lord. I, I could have preached hours, days, just on this chapter alone. But Lord, I thank you. And I pray that those things that needed to be lifted up were lifted up. Lord, thank you for challenging us. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, I pray, I pray for our nation. Lord, you, you've left us here, and there, there's still more souls to be saved and brought to the knowledge of the truth. And I, I ask you, Lord, help us to be that shining light in a dark, dark world as we see this world in a free fall. God, I thank you that you got us in your, your arms, Lord. You got us. Lord, I just give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
you glad that you know Jesus? I am. That we are truly saved. Well, study ahead. We're going to be right back into Second Thessalonians and uh, we're going to be focusing on the parousia, the second coming of Christ. Uh, this picture I want you to uh, focus in on. This actually comes off an album cover of uh, a rapper, a Christian rap. My son would be so proud of me, uh, D. Miles and um, very prolific uh, lyrics that he puts forth. But this picture really encompasses where we are. I mean, we're waiting and we're looking for Christ's return as he's transforming us and that we get to be with him. Don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but as we're studying the scriptures, we know that we're getting closer than we ever have been before. So I want you to be in prayer. I want you to focus in, fall in love with Jesus fall in love with him he's got everything in control until we meet again you be blessed <laughs>